Hi everybody, it's uh, John back with another model inbox review. Um, this video is all about the new tool Airfix Messerschmitt BF109E4, the 172nd scale new tool kit, and uh, what an absolute beauty this is too. We'll go into the uh, the parts and everything, but first of all, we'll have a look at the boxing history, like normal. There's a nice image here of this is actually an E4, um, which is in flying condition and it's flying the uh, the air show circuit somewhere in the world I can't remember exactly where but it's probably in Germany somewhere this one um, but I like the look of this and it's very reminiscent of the Battle of Britain sort of era of fighter isn't it so anyway boxing history this particular kit um, started off life as a new tool release from Hornby Productions Limited in 2012 and this is actually the boxing of the kit that I've got to look at today. Um, in my opinion this kit is superior to virtually every other ME109 or BF109E variant in 70 second scale and it has detail and it's similar to what you would find in say something 148 scale although the detail itself probably isn't as sharp um, and it's comprehensive, but it, it, it's an awful lot more than you'd normally get to expect in a 172nd scale kit. So anyway, that's the 2012 box originally released. That's the image on the front of the box cover. And then in 2012, they did a number of releases and special gift sets. The first of these was the, Ace, the aircraft of the ACES set, which incorporated a Spitfire Mark 1A, a BF109E3, I believe, or it might have been an E4, I'm quite... No, it is an E4, sorry, and a P-51D Mustang. And in the set, they tell you who the pilots are that they're supposed to, you know, refer to. Um, and the markings on this particular offering is very different to the markings that you get in the 2012 individual release. So that's the aircraft of the Aces box set. You also got um, an El Alamein box set, which incorporated a Curtis Tomahawk Mark IIb, which was another... Um, Hornby release that year and a Messerschmitt BF 109 E4B TROP uh, again this has different markings but it is the same kit that's in the box as the one that we're reviewing today um, so that's that offering 2012 also saw the release of a dogfight double in the guise of a Spitfire Mark 1A and a Messerschmitt BF 109 E4 again it's the same kit that we're reviewing today and the, one, uh, the Spitfire Mark 1A, I think, is the newer tool release that um, Hornby Productions produced as well. And apparently that is a really, really good kit too. I've not built that one. I haven't got it in my stash. Um, I don't think I will be building it either because I have a number of um, Spitfires in my stash. Um, yeah, so anyway, that that's the Dogfight double release in 2012. And then Hornby also released the BF109 E3. This is a different version to the one you get in the box on the E4, obviously, because it's an E3 variant flown by a different pilot. But this time it was um, incorporated into a starter set with a, a set of paints, poly cement and a, a nice humble brush there. Um, I've often said before, I don't like these Airfix acrylic paints. They are not good. on. I have seen a number of videos on YouTube at the moment where people have had... Um, interesting results and some of them quite good with the use of these airfix acrylics so uh, maybe you know if you've got some it might be worth trying them rather than going out and buying some additional paints um, 2012 went to 2013 and 2013 um, Hornby released a Battle of Britain experience box set which incorporated a Hurricane Mark 1, a Spitfire Mark 1A and a BF 109E3 now, these kits are all the new release tooling kits from Hornby. And I must say that the Hurricane, I've built the Hurricane, the new tool Hurricane, it's absolutely fantastic. And again, it's a kit that you would normally find detail on um, in a 72nd scale kit that you would normally expect to see in a 48th. Um, and that's the Battle of Britain Experience set released in 2013. Then in 2013, they also released a series of bag kits going back to... They called them Project Airfix kits, and I think these were in, they were aimed at the very, very younger generation to um, encourage them to come into the modelling trade. 
Um, this is called a BF109E. Not sure which variant it is, but to me, looking at the aircraft, I'm guessing it's an E3 from the Battle of Britain. Um, and this again, I'm sure this is the new tool model that you get in the same box that I'm reviewing today. So that's the 2013 bag kit edition. And then in 2013, they released this kit again. Um, I'm not sure whether there's any an E7 and E drop um, separate sprue in the box. I haven't seen this particular boxing, but the majority of the sprues are exactly the same as what you get in the kit that we're in, in box reviewing today. But this was a 2013 BF 109 E7 chop variant that they released that year. Then in 2014 they re-released this kit in an E3 guys. This is the same kit that you get in the boxing that I'm doing today but with E3 decals markings for that um, for that particular aircraft and it's obviously flown by a different pilot. Um, 2014 then went to 2015 which was the 75th anniversary Battle of Britain box set and this is actually quite an it's quite a nice box set because it incorporates all the new tool kits um, of every model that's featured in the box set. You've got a BF 109 E4, a Spitfire Mark 1A, a Hawker Hurricane Mark 1. Sorry, it's an E3 variant of the BF 109. And you also get a Heinkel HE P2, HE 111P2, um, which of course is the new tooling for this kit. Now they did, you, you have to be very careful because they did do a Battle of Britain experience boxing of a box set series and it was to commemorate um, I think it was 70 years and the thing about that particular kit is it has the old tool E variant of the Messerschmitt 109 the old tool Spitfire Mark 1A the old tool Hurricane and the old tool HE 111H20 and I'll be honest with you the old tool Hurricane is sort of okay the, the Spitfire Mark 1 is okay the 109E is okay, but that Heinkel is pretty dire. It's pretty terrible. So uh, I'll, I would definitely try and get hold of this one if you wanted to build a, a Battle of Britain diorama set or a Battle of Britain commemorative set rather than the older one, which I think was released in 2010. I think it was 2010, which would have been a 70-year anniversary, which is why they released it, obviously, that year. So... 2018 was the last boxing release of this kit. This again is the same model but with different markings that you got in my release when it was originally released earlier um, in the decade. Uh, this time the BF 109E4, uh, but the service is flown by a different, um, different pilot. So I'm going to leave you with a nice image there of an underside of a BF 109E3. I think this is another aircraft that's in the flying circuit um, for the air shows in Europe. It's nice to see um, ME109s being restored to flying condition because I can remember when I was a child and even when I was in my late teenage years going to air shows, the only 109 I ever saw was the Hispano Suiza powered one from the Duxford collection. There were no 109s of any type and I do remember there was a, f a first 109 of original restoration of 109 Frederick which was flying the air show circuits. Um, and it did actually crash on landing at one stage, which is a bit of a shame. Right, what I want to do quickly now is just bring your attention to the box that I've got to view here. Let's have a quick look. I'm going to try and keep the shadow out of the equation because there's a shadow on the image produced by the, the phone, unfortunately. <laughs> this is the kit we're looking at today. This is a 2013 release uh, Messerschmitt BF 109E4. And this kit is serial numbered A01008 in 172nd scale. There's a colour code callout guide on the back of the box. Um, and this is a model that incorporates, it's the guide to incorporate the, the markings and paint guide for an aircraft flown by Oberleutnant Franz von Vern of Gruppe Adjudant 1JG3 based at Somer in France during August 1940. So it's obviously a Battle of Britain variant which is quite nice now then there's no other advertising issues going on here nothing whatsoever um, but there is something i just want to bring to your attention which is quite interesting i've noticed this on a lot of hornby production kit releases is that on the back of the box 
it tells you the decals are produced by cartograph and cartograph as everyone knows is they're like the benchmark of decals so they produce some of the best decals in the world and i think it's nice that airfix are telling the buyers that the model's decals are made by cartograph and i've had a quick look at the parts and the decals and everything in this kit and I'm telling you this kit is a gem it's beautiful now then usual gump airfix modelers club join now and roll get get all your special gump and everything fantastic yeah give that a miss shall we um have a look at the decals in a minute first of all we'll have a quick look at the instruction leaflet now the instruction leaflet is pretty pretty much standard with uh, as, as what you get with most hornby produced uh, airfix kits it's a4 sized it's it's clearly marked it has a look of i've been photocopied about it um, but the information there's general gumph and stats and history of the aircraft here printed in different languages like normal and then you open the page and you've got assembly instructions printed in different languages just like normal and there's no point in going through all of that um, and then you've got some assembly icon instructions on the top here as well at the, sorry at the bottom of the page on page two and they're all the usual general stuff that you usually get in most instruction leaflets which is nice i always think it's funny that they put weight or weight may be required there there's a big lead weight icon there you're never going to use a weight in this it's a tail dragger right on the back page you've got a nice uh, stencil a stencil guide to show you where all the stencils go on this particular kit there are quite a large number of stencils on this even for a 170 second scale kit i'm going to try and bring this a little bit up if i can there we go uh, try and get much, much of that shadow out as possible so that's a nice it's a nice guide it's very clearly labeled lots of arrows pointing to exactly where the stencils go and each stencil is id which is brilliant and then you get to the actual guts of the kit the kit makes up in 14 stages um, and when i first saw these plans i couldn't believe what i was seeing this is a 70 second scale kit remember in stage one you produce the propeller and they're actually telling you to paint the propeller before you assemble it um, which i think in this case i would probably do because quite a lot of that props um, the actual propeller mount for the props is actually going to be visible through that front spinner isn't it so and the backing plate it's all going to be pretty you're going to be able to see quite a bit through that gap and then in section two you're looking at the interior and there is something worthy of note of the interior on this kit it is quite well detailed you've got a seat a floor pan an instrument panel there's a gun sight there which i think is a glass piece and you've also got a set of pedals the thing is um, if you install the pedals and the pilot you have to trim the actual pedals off the pedal stem mount otherwise you won't be able to fit the pilot's legs onto the floor pan and he will sit proud and you won't be able to fit the canopy in place so that's a very interesting um, notification there from airfix that you have to do that but obviously if you don't have the pilot in place having the pedals there on the stem is brilliant because you, you know you can you can use the canopy in the optional open position to view lots of the interior and there's quite a lot going on inside here you've got two lovely decals and i'll show you the decals in a minute for the instrument panel um which is quite nice so i've i'm a fan of decals if they're good quality i don't like the old paper ones that airfix used to do back in the 70s they were horrific and then in section three the first thing i noticed about this kit is it has an engine now you don't get that very often in 170 second scale which is really nice but there is an issue with the engine and i'll show you that when we get to the parts but you basically install the fuselage halves around the interior and you put the engine or uh, well, the engine's part it forms part of the interior sorry part of the uh, the fuselage halves and then they're telling you to put a19 two parts for a19 onto the the exhaust stubs mounts and i don't generally do that i would paint those after the kit's been painted and there are they're definitely an afterthought for for me those and then you put the propeller in place around the engine before you glue the fuselage halves together which is quite self-evident now then <clears throat> the me 109 e had a, a one-piece upper cowling and it also had a one-piece lower oil cooler cowling um, and these are both faithfully reproduced in the kit the actual upper cowling to the engine i'm guessing you could probably have that removable so that you could cover the engine if you wanted to or you could show it for display purposes 
um, which is quite nice. And then you've got the actual um, RAM cooler there. <clears throat> I think that's for the supercharger. The um, I think the supercharger had a, had a RAM cooler there. Section 5 and 6 is all to do with the tail and pennage. You've got the tail planes and rudder there going on in Section 5. And Section 6, you've got the tail plane support struts and the tail wheel. Uh, quite easy and evident to follow. And then in Section 7... <clears throat> You've got wing assembly, upper and lower halves. I would probably paint the upper halves inside to show um, show the colours for the wheel wells through there. And then you put the airframe together in section 8, which is pretty easy and self-explanatory. I've, I've, I've looked at quite a few reviews of this kit, and apparently it fits together like a glove. Um, which, is, which is quite good, because uh, the earlier tooling of the FX 109E... Um, had some fit issues around the wing roots, but the rest of it fitted together quite well, but it wasn't anything like as detailed as this. Series 9, you've got uh, the radiator cowlings there, which go on the underside of the wing, and the cannons mounts, the 20mm cannons in the wings there, parts A13 doubled up, and then you've got A17 as a pitot tube, and A14 and 15. Now, a lot of people I've seen on reviews don't seem to understand what these are but they actually fit on the ailerons and their horn balances to aid... They're, they're like um, drag coefficient blobs that you put onto the actual ailerons on the wings to help the pilot um, manipulate them with a joystick an awful lot easier. When they're horn balanced, they're balanced against the slipstream so that they, if you like, um, they're easier to, to manipulate the controls. In section 10, you've got a choice of flaps. You can have the flaps lowered or raised, which is quite nice as well. Um, I really like what Airfix have done with this kit. They've took quite a lot of um, ideas and incorporated them into the kit so that you can decide what you want to do with it, exactly what you want to do with it, which is brilliant. Um, <clears throat> now then... Section 11 and 12 are allowing you to have the undercarriage in the raised or lowered position. And again, you paint the various parts required um, before assembly. I generally put the wheels on, again, as an afterthought with the exhaust stubs. Um, and you can, you can paint the wheels up an awful lot easier when they're, when they're on sprue, which is great. And then section 13 and 14 is to produce the canopy installation. And you've got the canopy, which builds in four, uh, three parts. You've got the forward section windshield, the rear um, windshield gu guide, and then you've got the, um, it's, a, it's like a folding canopy. It opens up to the starboard side of the aircraft, and you can have that in an optional open or closed positions by removing the tabs or leaving them on, which is, which is easy. It's great. Airfix have, you know, they've looked into an awful lot of things of how to deal with all of this. So that's the instructions um, covered. <clears throat> I seem to have folded that up a bit. Crap. <laughs> Sorry about that. <laughs> that's better. Right. Um, that's the instructions dealt with. Quite an easy, easy to follow instructions. And here we have a look at the cartograph decals. Now, I've said many times before that there are four major companies and they all tend to use cartograph now with their kits. Airfix, Tamiya, Revell and Italeri. And they all use cartograph decals and the decals, I mean, I'm... I'm I'm not even going to have to really go through them too much because I know they're going to be fantastic. As expected, the register on them is fantastic. And there's the little instrument panel decals. And I think they're good enough to use. They're actually quite nice. Quite like those. There's some um, stencils. There's quite a lot of stencils on this kit. Um, so decaling this kit up is not going to be a five-minute job. It's going to be quite... Um, Quite a long-winded affair, but the decals look really, really nice, so I'm impressed with that. The parts. <clears throat> now, the parts on this kit are brilliant. I'm not going to open the, um, I'm not going to open the, the bag for the canopy parts, but there are actually four parts on this canopy here. You can just see them through the bag. You've got a gun sight in the top right-hand corner. You've got the folding square canopy section, which goes in the middle of the windscreen in the rear the rear uh, visor there and the parts are really really clear they're very very nicely molded with fine frame moldings the features on them are really good and I'm impressed with those very very much they should paint up really nice very impressed with that so that's the transparencies 
Then we'll go through the boring sprue, what I call the boring sprue, although it has got quite a number of things to look at. Um, one of the things I like about this kit that you didn't get in the older tooling, E variant of the Airfix kit, is that the attention to surface detail on the parts is faultless. Um, I've noticed a lot of people on, you, on YouTube who have done reviews on this kit, they have the impression that the actual engraved panel lines are quite thick. But if you look at a real 109, they're about right. Um, they are a little tiny bit thick, right? But when you apply paint to that, those recessed panel lines are going to come up beautiful. I'm trying to get them into view so that the camera will actually show them, and it's not going to do it, unfortunately. Oh yeah, you can just see them there. Now that recessed panel line, yeah, is a little bit on the thick side, but when you apply paint to that line, it's going to fill up slightly, and it's going to fill up absolutely perfectly. I'll guarantee it. I think Airfix have got this absolutely spot on. And the other thing I like about this kit, <coughs> there are two, there are three aspects on this kit. You've got one of the flap flaps there, and that's quite nicely detailed with a fabric covered texture. Very nice. You've got separate oleos to the doors on the undercarriage, which is brilliant. It means you can paint them up as separate entities and you can make a much, much better and easier to, to achieve job out of that. Um, and then you've got these radiator housings, the cowlings for the radiators, and I'm hoping that's going to come up so that you can see exactly what I mean by the detail. There's actually some rivet detail on the side of the flanges where they fit into the lower wing, and the rivet detail is absolutely gorgeous, and it's very true to life. I'm looking at this underside view of this 109 here, and it is perfectly reproduced. Really, really impressed with that. Airfix, well, well done indeed. The interior detail for the wings is pretty similar to the, G, the G6 variant retool, um, which, I mean, there wasn't a huge amount to see, actually, when the undercarriage doors were open, were there? So that, you know, that's, that's okay, I suppose. Um, the second sprue is even more exciting. <clears throat> Now, the only fault I've got with this particular tooling is one of the faults that I had with the other Messerschmitt, the G6 new tooling, is that I think the pilot, he looks a little bit obese, and he looks like he's sitting on the toilet, which is a shame. And I think some of the older style pilots looked a bit more correct. But to be honest with you, he, <laughs> what you can see of him through the, through the cockpit, if you have the cockpit in the closed position, it's okay. What you see there is, is fine. The upper surface detail to the engine cowling there is quite nice. It's quite nicely depicted, which is great. And the propeller looks really nicely moulded. Again, it's very reminiscent of the picture I've got of 109 in front of me, which is brilliant. The tread detail on the tyres is really nice. And they're also depressed under the weight of the aircraft, which is good. I like that. And you've got the lower oil cowling, oil cover cowling there. The oil cooler cowling rather, which is nice, <clears throat> nicely uh, rendered. And then all these small parts as well, the, all these small parts, the first thing I noticed about them is that they're absolutely flash free. There's no flash on this kit anywhere whatsoever. Instrument panel there. <clears throat> the instrument panel has no surface detail on it, no dials, no nothing. And it's a shame this camera is not going to focus, but it's not. Uh, there we go. I'm getting it in now. Getting into focus now. There we go. There's no surface detail, on it, but you've got decals, and they're very nice. They're quite, you know, I'll be quite happy to use those. Pilot seat looks okay. Pilot seat there, that's pretty good. All the small parts are very crisp, very nicely molded, and the pilot's floor pan there, again, that's nicely molded as well. And I like the fact in this kit, unlike the G6 new tool, that the interior actually has a proper interior floor pan with a seat and bulkhead. The joystick, everything, it's its brilliant. And I can't fault the parts on this kit at all. It's a really, really nice gem of a release from Airfix. Very, very pleased with this, and I think it will build relatively quickly, but very, very accurately and nice. It will produce a nice finish, and I'm really, really excited about this one. Now then, <clears throat> I'm just going to pack all this stuff away, 
and I'm going to leave you with an image of the box so you've got something to look at whilst I'm going through the gun. The gun on this, um, when I get to the options and costs, you can obviously imagine that there are quite a few options. But what I wanted to do, as I did with the G6 variant, is I only wanted to incorporate the options that were available as an E variant model. There is also a different variant which is incorporated into an E, which was the 109T. And the 109T um, I think was a high altitude reconnaissance version of the 109E. Now then, the gump on the kit. Let's just um, put this down so you can see it. There we go. Now then. <clears throat> the model we're reviewing is an Airfix Messerschmitt BF 109E4. Its serial number is AO1008 and it's scaled in 172nd scale. Its release date was 2012. There are decals for one version, a BF 109E4 flown by Oberleutnant Franz Vern Vern who was um, Grouper adjutant for 1JG3 based at Sommer in France, August 1940, during the Battle of Britain. The kit consists of 46 parts on two light grey plastic sprues and four parts on one clear plastic sprue, producing 50 parts in total. Now there is something interesting that I've noticed about this, is that the kit, um, there's something written on it somewhere, where it's trying to tell you that there's 64 parts in this kit. There certainly isn't. I've double checked and triple checked. There's only 50. So I don't know whether um, there are optional parts for a different variant that would use the same box but just print a different image on the front. I'm not sure. But there are definitely only 50 parts in total in this kit. The dimensions of the model when built will be 4.75 inches long by 5.5 inches span and 1.5 inches high on its undercarriage. The options and costs are quite, um, they're quite varied. <coughs> and some of the scales that are available are quite interesting as well. There's a company called Sokuda Hobby who build um, a gift set incorporating lots of different Messerschmitt, uh, blah, 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 sorry, Messerschmitts in 1700 scale. They build a BF109E, an ME163, an ME262A and an FW190A in a German Luftwaffe aircraft set. Um, I've got no details of pricing on this, but uh, it looks quite interesting and the parts don't look that inaccurate. In one 150th scale, um, Bush built a BF109E, um, which is released by Eco, Hobby Miniatures, Lindbergh and Pegaso. They all rebox the Bosch uh, the Bush kit and I've got no details of pricing on any of these either but Sanko do a model of their own tooling of a BF 109E and again I've got no pricing on that they're all in 150th scale which is quite interesting <clears throat> one 144 scale AHM do a BF 109E which is actually a Mitsua kit no pricing details on that F Toys do a Wingit collection series and this incorporates three planes a BF 109E a P40E Warhawk and a P39Q Aero Cobra. Again, I've got no pricings on those, but I have seen them available um, on eBay from time to time, but they've never sold, and I can't remember what the prices were on them. Um, Gunze Sanyo do a BF109E, which retails for between five and twelve pound. As do Ravel, who rebox the Gunze Sanyo kit as a mini wing series BF109E, and that retails for the same price, about five to twelve pound. And Mitsui do a BF109E, obviously. Um, and that retails for about £9 to £15, a bit more pricey that one. One 100th scale is also covered by a company called Atlantic Geocatoli SPA and they build a vinyl kit um, of a BF109E. Again, I've got no pricings for any of these in one 100th scale. Eldon um, build a BF109E, which is actually a Murasan tooled kit. Um, and Murasan obviously do their own kit as well in 1100 scale, but there's no pricings available on any of those. AHM, uh, AHM do a BF109E3 in 187 scale. Again, I've got no pricings on any of those either. <coughs> 172nd scale. Now then, <coughs> 
I'll try and go through this as quickly as possible. Academy do a standalone kit, BF109E, for five to twelve pounds. Aereo de Combatimento do a matchbox retool BF109E trop. For, uh, no pricing is available for that. Aeroplast do a face kit of a 109E1 for about six to twelve pound. Airfix new tool E4 um, is six to twelve. Uh, sorry, five to eleven pound, depending on when you buy it from a shop or off eBay. They also do a BF109E3 stroke four trop, which is the old tool kit, and that's available for about three to ten pound. They also do an Airfix Quick Build BF109E, which is available for about £10 to £14. And then you have the gift sets, which include um, BF109Es in lots of different guises, as we've said in the boxing history, but there are a few others as well. And they retail for anything between 15 and 54 quid. The 54 quid one is the one the Battle of Britain 75th anniversary set which includes all of the four retooled kits including the 111 HE Heinkel. Um, a Langer models build a BF109E which is actually a Revel reboxed kit and no pricings on that. A model build a BF109E3 or 4 for about 8 to 10 pound. Aoda Hobbies build the Hasegawa kit, no pricings on that. Cyber Hobby release a standalone kit which is BF109E4, again no pricing on that. Doyusha build an E3109 which is actually a reboxed Hobby Boss kit, no pricings on that. Dragon also build a BF109E3 but I've got no pricings on that either but I would have thought it's somewhere about 15 quid. Face build a BF109E1, um, no pricings on that. The Hasegawa BF109E which is actually in the old Hales boxings usually is it retails about seven to twelve quid Hella do a bf109 e3 which is actually a Hella tool and not an airfix kit that retails for seven to twenty eight pound hobby boss build the bf109 e3 which is twelve to eighteen pound humbrol build the bf109 e which is actually the Hella box re uh, Hella tool kit reboxed and that goes for ten to fifteen quid icm do a series of bf109 e's from an e1 to an e4 they retail for between five and twelve pounds. JMK models do a VAC form model of an 109E1, and that I haven't got any pricings on that. Sorry, the Matchbox BF109E4 Trop is about ten to fifteen quid. The Matchbox Classic World War II fighter set, which includes a Hurricane, a Spitfire, a 109E, and an FW190, all from the Purple range, that retails for between twenty-five and forty pounds. MPC build a 109E, which is actually the Airfix kit, um, four to twelve pounds. Otaki build a 109E, no pricings on that. Part models build a BF109E3, which is actually the ICM kit reboxed for five to twelve pounds. Ravel build the BF109E, which is a standalone kit from Ravel for three to ten pounds. RPM build an E1 variant, which is a face kit retooled for five to ten pounds. Tamiya build an E4 trop, which is seven to twelve. Uh, sorry, seven to fifteen pound. And Toga build a BF109T, which is actually a retooled with different decals face kit. And again, I've got no pricings for that. Now, one of the worst models of a 109 I've ever seen in my entire life was produced in 155th scale by a company called Starfix in Israel. They build a BF109E, which is often marketed as a 48 scale kit. But it is not. It's a 155th scale model. It retails for seven to fifteen pound. But believe me, it's not worth two pound. It's awful. The 150th scale range um, is a, they're covered by Murasan and Nichimo, who rebox the Murasan kits. They're both just 109Es, and I've got no pricings on those. In 148th scale, Academy build a BF109E for six to ten pound. Airfix build a BF 109E1 stroke 3 stroke 4 for 15 to 25 pound. Airfix gift, sorry, Airfix gift sets, which include a BF 109E and a Spitfire, that retails for 20 to 30 pound. AK Interactive, who rebox the Edward kit, build a 109E for 25 to 30 pound. Dragon build an E4 variant for 18 to 30 pound. Edward build an E variant for 8 to 20 pound. Gartex have reboxed the Hasegawa kit as an E for I've got no pricings on that, sorry. Hasegawa's BF109E retails for 15 to 30 quid. Hobbycraft do an E variant and I've got no pricing on that. Monogram do a BF109E which is 7 to 18 pounds. Pegasus Hobbies build an E variant for 12 to 16 pounds. 
Plastic Planet Club a Reebok the Edward kit with 109 as a 109e sorry for again I've got no pricing on that Revell's BF 109e is actually the Reebok monogram kit for 8 to 20 pound and Tamiya do the e variant for 15 to 25 pound and then you go into super size in 132nd now <clears throat> Cyber Hobby build an e-variant, but I've got no pricing on that. Dragon do an e-variant, which is actually the Cyber Hobby rebox for twenty-five to forty-five pound. Edward do an e-variant for seventy to eighty pound, and Frog did a BF one hundred nine e, which is actually a reboxed Hasegawa kit for fifty to a hundred pound. Hasegawa's kit, which is also the Frog kit, again remember is the e-variant for thirty to fifty-five pound. Matchbox did a BF one hundred nine e three for ten to thirty pound. Minicraft did a Hasegawa uh, rebox. Sorry, Minicraft Hasegawa built the Hasegawa kit reboxed under the Minicraft label of the E variant. I've got no pricing on that. And there's an E3 variant built by Trumpeter for thirty to thirty-five pound. Then you can buy them in one twenty-fourth scale as well. And Airfix did quite a nice BMW, uh, BF one hundred nine E three or four, and that's usually available for about twenty-five to sixty pound. Bandai did a variant, an e-variant, uh, no pricings on that. And Heno also did a BF109E, which was actually the Airfix Super Kit. No pricings on that. And Airfix's kit was also released by MPC in America as an e-variant, simply for £30 to £50. You can also get this kit uh, as a resin kit in 118th scale um, by HPH. Uh, they did a one a BF 109e, um, and this is probably the most priciest kit I've ever heard of. It retails somewhere between 400 and 450 quid, and then you can get what's called an egg scale model from a company called Tiger Models, um, and these models were produced in a scale, uh, not really to scale of the original plane, but so that all the parts of the airframe and fuselage fitted around an egg shape that was chicken egg sized. And they produce a BF109E, which retails for about nine to ten pound. Now then, conclusions. Virtually everybody on the modelling scene likes this kit, with much praise awarded from all. The kit is beautifully moulded with recessed panel lines, rivet detail, and lots of features not normally found in a kit of this scale, i.e., a Daimler Benz DB601 engine, an optional pilot, raised and lowered flaps and undercarriage, under rotating propeller. This kit is everything the Retool BF109G6 new tool simply is not. So I'm really looking forward to this. I'm very, very excited about building this kit and I'm very much looking forward to um, showing the end results. I'm going to build this kit directly out of the box. So um, Franz von Bern is going to be seated in the pilot seat. Um, Although I'm not sure whether he's actually going to be sitting in the seat. He might be sitting on the wing because I do fancy not chopping off those pedals and showing the interior with the cockpit open. So um, that's probably what what the score is going to be. Um, so that's the inbox review for the Airfix Messerschmitt BF109 E4. I hope this uh, video has been of some use to you. And if you have any questions or queries or anything whatsoever, just pop it in the uh, comments. And if there's any questions, I'll get back to you as soon as possible. Thanks for tuning in and happy modelling. Bye-bye.